Hi my rosy buds. I want to share with you today how I customized this wooden dollhouse. It came as a plain wooden dollhouse and I customized it with some paint, some fabric and decoupage to make it look like this cute little blue house with white trim. I love it. I love how it turned out. It did take a little time and patience and quite a few steps, but I think it was well worth it at the end because we have a charming little dollhouse that my daughter can use and play with now. To make this project, I started with a plain wooden dollhouse from Melissa and Doug and some fabric that I loved in this blue floral print. I'll leave a list below of all the other supplies I used. I used a variety of different craft paints and two different kinds of decoupage, plus a variety of tools to help smooth and adhere the fabric down. After a light sand, I gave the entire dollhouse a coat of white paint. Once that dried, I went back over the trim and the roof with another coat of white paint since I knew they would show. Once everything dried, I started on the side of the house that didn't have any windows as my test area to work on my technique. I watered down a little decoupage. I used a matte formula here. And then I brushed it onto the house and smoothed the fabric down. I used a couple different smoothing tools to get the fabric to lay flat. And once that dried, I put another coat of decoupage over top. One thing I want to point out, it's really important to get decoupage over the edges because it makes it easier to cut when we trim the fabric off later on. I worked my way around the house using more decoupage and adhering the fabric down. I did need to trim around certain areas, including the chimney on the one side and then the windows on the back. After the fabric was completely dry, I started to use a straight edge and a craft knife to trim the edges cleanly as best as I could. This is really why it's so important to make sure you have decoupage on some of that fabric. It prevents fraying. The trickiest part was definitely working around the windows and the roof line on the front and the back of the house. My tips for you are to make sure you apply a very liberal coat of decoupage and really squish the fabric in and around using your tools. That will help. And definitely allow the fabric and decoupage to dry thoroughly before you go in with a craft blade. And of course, trimming as you go helps a little bit. I continue to follow the same process around the front of the house, including the garage area and the porch. And I'm glad I waited to do this section last because by this point I had my technique kind of down pretty good. Working around the porch area was a little bit trickier. It was kind of hard to get in and around the doors under the porch. So my solution to that was to create little strips and glue them down individually. They weren't quite as clean and seamless as the other pieces of the house, but under the porch you can't really notice. Using a fabric with a pattern on it in a small repeat kind of helped disguise those overlaps and lines. The front of the house had the most detail and took the longest amount of time to reveal the trim work and the doors, but honestly that was the best part is seeing the house come together. If any fabric lifted up as I trimmed, I did go back over with a little more decoupage and I forgot to video that. Once everything dried, I sanded the edges just to clean them up a little and remove any fabric frays. As a final step, I applied about four coats of Mod Podge hard coat over all of the painted and fabric surfaces on the dollhouse. After this product cures, which takes about four weeks, it supposedly will give a very durable finish, which is what I've found so far. We've had the dollhouse for about two months, and so far it's holding up to a toddler, which is saying a lot. Oh, I forgot to mention, I also painted the front door a pretty pink. It matched the flowers of the fabric. And for a doormat, I used a piece of doily that I painted black and then just glued it down with more decoupage. Just sweet little details that add to the charm of the house, don't you think? We gave the dollhouse to my daughter for Christmas. She went crazy for it then. It came with a set of furniture and two little dolls, but I also included these bunny figurines, which are quite charming and look cute with their vintage clothes and the style of the house. I do want to warn you that if you're interested in this particular model of dollhouse, 
I've been told that this model is being discontinued by Melissa and Doug. You still can find it online on Amazon and a couple other places. I'll see if I can find some links and leave them below for resources where you can find them. Or there's a lot of other companies out there that make some really cute plain wooden dollhouses that are just begging for customization. I'm thrilled with how this dollhouse turned out. It's so charming and I love the vintage look to it. And to be honest, the best part about it is watching my daughter play with it. If you like this project, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more creative and rosy ideas on this channel. Thank you for watching. You taking pictures? <laughs> no, don't touch it. Don't touch it, okay? Cheese. Come on, take pictures. No, no, honey. Open. Close. Open. Close. <laughs>